everybody. Uh, welcome to our panel about college experiences. This is our first panel on uh, this topic, so we're all super excited. Um, today we have with us Gracie and Haritha. Um, yes, so why don't you guys both introduce yourselves first? Okay, I'm Gracie. Um, I'm a second year student at the University of Waterloo. And I'm studying, I'm in this program called Arbus, which is basically arts and business. And you get to pick your arts courses second year. And I'm choosing to do an economics and psychology double major. Hey, hi guys, I'm Harita and I go to Boston University. I am a rising sophomore, a sophomore soon in a month. <laughs> uh, I'm a double major at the College of Arts and Sciences and my majors are biology and psychology. The university is located in Waterloo, Canada. It's close to Toronto, it's like an hour away. Um, the program that I'm in is five years long because there's also co-op terms. So what happens is, depending on the program that you're in, you have these co-op terms, which are essentially work terms, where you don't have classes, you don't have any of that, like it's proper work. And usually it's paid, but sometimes not. And you kind of, you apply the term before your co-op term, during your study term, and you have advisors and everything that kind of guide you through the process the whole time. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's why it like extends your program, it usually alternates between study and work terms. Yeah, so uh, my program is gonna be four years long. So I will be graduating in 2023. Um, so about Boston University, uh, it is located in Boston. It's in the heart of, it's in the heart of Boston. It is a city campus, so it's like open. You just, there's no particular entrance or anything. That really confused me, by the way, when I went there the first time. But um, yeah, um, it's an amazing location because uh, it's along the Charles River. Uh, it's like when you go there, it's like you just see the other side of the city. It's Cambridge, you know, you see, uh, Harvard, MIT, it's just beautiful. And um, the location's good, even in terms of the public transport, because it's like right on the road and you don't have to like, it's not a hassle. So um, yeah, great location. Um, okay, so, you know, at all universities, you get to kind of pick when your classes are going to be. So I kind of like a late start to my day. So I have a lot of time to like prepare for it. So my classes usually start around like 11 a.m. But I'm like up around nine, sometimes 10, just to kind of you know, get ready, take my time with breakfast and everything. And I go through my day, I have my classes. And in between, like there's a bunch of different libraries that you can go to. So I like to do that sometimes. I like to sit at Starbucks a lot, which, you know, it's kind of trader-ish because Tim Hortons, right? <laughs> so it's it's a good it's a good place to study because everyone's like kind of in that zone and even within libraries there's like silent zones and like kind of group study areas so you can just kind of pick where you want to be and then once I'm kind of done with my day there's a lot of clubs that I like to go to so I'm like I'm in the dance club so I do that um and that that's like twice a week but usually it's just like there's a lot of work so I kind of get to do that <laughs> And then, like, when does the day usually like end? When do you eat dinner? Is the dining halls open like late, or do you cook? Yeah, yeah, they're open like mostly, and like kind of it's right off campus. There's a plaza with like restaurants that are open almost until like two a.m. So you can always go there. And, yeah, it's a great place to socialize too. Yeah, um, I completely agree with Gracie when she said that she uh, she's planned out her day which starts late because I am not an early riser, uh, at least in university. So, <laughs> uh, so usually like my classes start around like 12. So in the mornings, I usually just, you know, catch up with the work I have, just finish up my homework assignments or things like that. And then I head out to my class and I made sure like at least the last semester that I had all my classes were paced out that every day I had like two or three classes max so I could like, you know, try different other things, you know, outside academic life, explore life uh, and Boston University. It's, it's known for that, you know, there are more than like 450 clubs there. So um, I made sure I did that this semester. So after my classes, what I usually do, my evenings look like this. It's either um, a run by the Charles River 
or I'm at the Fit Rec, which is the fitness center, or I go to my clubs. So um, I'm a part of the art club and I am into this startup that my friend and I are doing. It's called Innovate BU. That's where students like us have the opportunity to go and propose our ideas and get into our startup plans. So that keeps me occupied in the evenings. Then usually I prefer to have like relatively early dinners. So around, that's about like 6.30 or something. So I have a quick dinner and then it's time for me to do my work. So uh, when I study, I usually like to go to this um, housing place. It's called Student Village and it's only for uh, juniors and seniors. Um, so like when I say that, uh, it's just really nice. It's usually like a freshman and sophomore, they don't get housing there, but it's like one of the best housing places in BU. So I always go there to study because they're really high rise buildings. So you get a massive view of the entire city and it's just beautiful. So I like to go study there. And after that, so we have late night cafes. So it opens around like, you know, 10 o'clock and goes up to one. So if at all I'm hungry, I just grab a meal with my friends there at late night. That's what my day looks like. Um, I actually really like the professors at my university. I think that like, that was something that was um, like, it was surprising to me because I thought, you know, with such big classes, you know, professors wouldn't be that approachable or anything. But I can still, you know, message my professors on LinkedIn or email them if I have any doubts, even if they're, you know, my first term professors from first year, like it doesn't matter, they're still available. And even when classes were going on, their office hours were really, you know, well placed so that you could honestly approach them at any time. And they were really casual about it. Like it wasn't scary to go and talk to your professors. Like it was really normal which I thought would be really different because, you know, at school we always thought like university was this like big scary thing, but it really wasn't. Like I thought it was, you know, it was really good. And I would say the worst thing about it is the cold. <laughs> I was <laughs> not prepared. <laughs> like I am so easily cold and then I go there and then we're in October, which is like, it's, you know, it's not supposed to snow in October and we're all out for Halloween and it starts snowing and all of us are just like heading back quickly because it's so cold and no one was prepared for it and you know it's just it was terrible I was shocked I was not ready I had not taken enough clothes to keep me warm you know I had to go shopping at that point like my roommate she is from Canada so she took me and she's like okay this is what you have to get this is how you survive and like I thought yeah no, that was like shocking <laughs> I'm going to start with the best thing, obviously. Uh, I think the diversity, and when I mean diversity, it's also the kind of people I've come across, uh, starting right from faculty to like my classmate in like any random class I sit to. I think BU is so diverse that every time I walk into, even if, even if it's going to be the same class, I meet a new person every single time. There's not been a time that I haven't met someone new. So I feel like that's really exciting because now that they're out there, you know, far away from home, like, I feel like what I would want to know or learn is to meet new people and learn from them. Because every time you meet someone new, it's like you're learning something new. So I feel like uh, BU is a great place for it. And definitely it's location because it's like at the heart of the city, you know, it's like you have quick access to everything. You have 7-Eleven, you have like uh, supermarkets nearby, so many restaurants, it's right by Fenway, so if you want to go feel the Boston vibes, you know, like go for a baseball game, you know, you can, it's right there, and it's all like at like walkable distance, so you don't have to really like get a cab or like, you know, worry about like paying for it, and also like the T, as they call it, or the local train, it's like, um, uh, two point five six dollars every time you swipe with your trolley card. So I think it's good uh, if you're a student because they have like multiple plans and you can just choose one from it. So um, I think the location and the diversity has really drawn me to be. And um, so the worst thing here it comes, freshman housing. I think I'm gonna say that because uh, everyone's all about Warren Towers, uh, which is for freshmen. But I think it's just too congested. Although it's like the location, Warren has the best location. Because it's, it's like right in the middle of the stretch of Commonwealth Avenue. 
although it's like that, I feel like the first time when I walked in, I was claustrophobic. So I would never want to house in Warren ever again. So I feel like sometimes with housing, it can be a little challenging. But again, I know a lot of people who are like, yeah, I want to go back to Warren again because, you know, there's dining, the location, laundry, everything right in there. So I feel like it's really, uh, it depends on your personal preference. But um, I think housing and food might disappoint you at times, but you get used to it. <laughs> Okay, so basically Waterloo is known for its like engineering, CS, math programs. So if you go into that, like it is going to be competitive. It is going to be stressful. Like I can see it because I have friends from like those faculties and they are, they have a lot of work to do, but like you have to know that going in. If you, if you know it, then you will be fine. If you're prepared for it, you'll be fine. But I know the people who thought it'd be way easier than it was and they struggled, but you know, they had to get help. So they were really stressed out. But usually in the other faculties, it's about what classes you take. So people aren't as stressed out. They're more open to doing other things. And they're also able to do other things. So yeah, like, you know, just taking part in like clubs or going out, socializing, meeting people, you know, going to events. Like those are things that I see happen more in my faculty so the arts faculty or even the science faculty but not so much in the math or the cs part of it so yeah it's competitive but you know you have to want to get into that okay so i'm gonna start by saying like view is very social in terms of like everything so um i feel like uh even though like so the thing is with BU, because it's an open campus, it's like you don't know if you're going to bump into an undergrad student or a graduate student because you like all the schools are right next to each other. Like there's College of Arts and Sciences, there's Wheelock School of Education, uh, Sargent School of Health and Westrom in the same line. So people, it's like if you see with the particular class timings, people who come in the Questrom Business School, you might have you might meet more seniors there or like even graduate students at the time. So I feel like with that, it's kind of like, um, it's like easy to move along because it's like, no one's kind of like, you know, behind you. Like, no, it's, it's not like, okay, you need to do this because someone else is doing it. So I feel like that's kind of good because there's just so many people and then we use a big school. So it's like, it's not the same people, even like my friends, unless like I plan to meet them, it's like, I just don't bump into them. So I feel like, that being given like um like uh like how gracie said like waterloo can be competitive at times but i feel like i i don't find that in um beauty it's because people are just like every time you meet someone they're just from different schools or like even if they're in the same school it's like different subjects so it's like yeah okay i i'm i'm head, i'm heading out to do this and you're heading out to do this. Oh, okay it's like cool so i feel like it's like that so yeah it's pretty like relaxed I would say because even though it's like fast it's a fast moving life like sometimes I just you know grab a meal and I sit and watch outside like it's like I can see everyone down on the road and it's like everyone's just walking it's like they always have their headphones in and then they're just walking it's like nobody cares about anything else it's just their own work especially the peak class hours like it's just funny sometimes when you just sit and watch okay um Actually, I was, I didn't expect to find such a big Indian community there, but I did because they all just happened to be staying at the same student housing that I was in. Well, a lot of them were, a lot of the really big Indian community. And there's like a club, there's like an Indian student association and stuff. So they're always hosting events, you know, they have stuff going on. And we have a neighboring university called Wilfrid Laurier. So they have an Indian community too. So both of these communities really like get together for a lot of events. So you always meet people that are from the same place as you are from a different university or, you know, I've run into so many people that I know mutually just because of the community. That was, it was great. Like they had a Diwali party. They had like a Holi party. It just doesn't feel like you're not home when you really want to be, you know? So yeah, uh, my meeting with, uh, um, I would say like, 
I think the main Indian community for my batch um, was similar uh, to Gracie's. They were in the same housing as mine, like freshman housing, um, Warren Towers. So um, it, it was like, I kind of felt weird at the beginning when I walked in because it was like, in like you know, it's like common rooms in DISB, you know, how we have common rooms in dorms. So it's like that. There was one room like that. And then they were, there was this like, huge group of Indians. And then like, they were like, oh, like, hi. And I was like, um, hi. Like, I was shook. Like, I had, I had no idea how to re respond. And then um, I met people from everywhere. Like, this one girl, she was like, oh, hi, I've seen you in Bangalore. And I was like, um, hi. <laughs> you know, it was like, it was really shocking, not because I did not expect to see Indians. I mean, it's Boston. I definitely thought I'd see Indians, but just not all of them at once, you know. Uh, that way of speaking, Indian community is pretty big. We do have clubs. Uh, there's the we have a lot of dance clubs, and they usually like there's like a Bangra club, and like you know there's so many like uh, Kathak, you know there's so many dance clubs which are very Indian. So I feel like the Indian community is really big, and even if there are not citizens, there are people who are like American Indians, you know. So that way, I feel like it's really easy just to keep in touch, you know, with like feeling home, to keep in touch with that feeling, I guess. Um, yeah, apart from that, I feel like we do have like celebrations. We had for uh, Dashera, Diwali, and yeah, we missed Holi because of the pandemic, but I really hope we, um, we can have it next year. But uh, the Indian community is big. I don't think I've ever had to feel like I was being looked over for something because there was a graduate present. I think my university does a really good job of providing opportunities for both undergraduate and graduate students so that you don't actually feel like you're missing out on anything. You still have opportunities. You can still be a part of you know, research studies. You can still be a part of a lot. Like You just have to know you just have to want it. So if you want it, you're going to contact the right people. You're going to look it up. It's not hard to find. It's definitely. Like, they have not made it super difficult to do. You don't have to contact, like, 50 people to get to, to get to it. You don't have to have connections. You just have to talk to people. Yeah, I would go with the same for Boston University because I feel like um, they actually focus a lot on undergraduate research. Like, I feel like that's a phenomenal, phenomenal way to support us because... You know, sometimes uh, people would say, oh, yeah, it's just college, you're just an undergrad, you have like nothing, you know, there's no real work to do. But that's so not true. Like, even we do um, have our internship and research opportunities. Uh, I am going to uh, talk even for like uh, students who are going to be on an F1 status. Uh, do not worry, like there are umpteen opportunities. So I'm going to start by saying uh, there's this program called Europe. Uh, it's undergraduate research uh, our program. So if anyone here who's watching us is going to go to Boston University, do, do check that out. It's really good. So uh, apart from that, so there's this career development center. I'm sure every university has that. Um, but in BU, like um, literally every month, you have uh, internships, like recruiters coming in for undergraduates. Like you have like so many internship opportunities. And even for researchers, like, you're the head of your department, like she keeps emailing you, you know, for like research assistant positions. And like, all you got to do is kind of grab the opportunity, you know, you don't like be like, oh, I'm an undergrad, like, what will I get? Like, you know, you just don't do that. As long as like you go out there and you want it, like Gracie said, then you're going to get it. And um, at the same time, I felt this, uh, I don't know. Uh, if it's true and if, if it would apply to everybody. But in my first semester, like um, in my freshman year, I felt that with the clubs, um, sometimes like when it's especially headed by seniors and like people and there are more seniors or like, you know, if there's something like that, they might not give preference to uh, freshman students. You know, if you want to say, or oh, when you apply for e-board or, you know, when you, uh, want to do something that's going to be position based they might not choose you but don't feel bad that's probably because they want you to just settle in uh so don't like let that you know make you feel low or like don't let that discourage you yeah. i'm going to add on to that and talk about research as well which is like that a lot of 
a lot of professors or a lot of labs, they unfortunately are not looking for first years simply because you don't have the skills yet. And that's completely yeah. fine. And you have to also understand it from their point of view, which is that they, they would much rather train a person that is already at a certain skill level than somebody who doesn't have any skills. Um, and that's absolutely fine. But that being said, like at UC San Diego, at least, I know a lot of freshmen who still manage to get research opportunities. So it's, it's not like to rule that out completely. So I would say that, so we have beauty dons. I don't know if that's what they're called at other universities, but they're basically like upper year students that stay on your floor to just kind of help you out. Um, so I thought like at my university, I found that to be really great actually, because they did a really good job of bringing everybody on your floor together. So they would just, you know, call people in, we'd watch matches together, they'd get food, you know, and just be a great time to just socialize. And um, my housing also had like a lot of opportunities for you to be able to meet your professors outside of the classroom. So they would come in and it would be a really, really casual thing. So, you know, there'd be a movie playing and you'd just meet your professors. You could just talk to them and, you know, just introduce yourself. It didn't have to be like, oh, you can ask me that. It's like, no, that's not what it was for. It was just to kind of, you know, get comfortable with them be able to talk to them about you know anything that you might need so I really like that about my housing but <laughs> the I feel like the food at university housing is never great like I don't know anybody who said my university housing food was amazing it's just not and that will end up being the worst part for most people like you um, yeah, okay, so the worst thing, I feel like definitely, uh, I mentioned earlier about how I found Warren Towers to be really claustrophobic, but apart from that, I feel like the food, definitely, uh, I don't know if it's because like I'm from India and I'm just used to having like, you know, like good food, okay, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, I'm not like, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the food in my university. Like you have a variety and some days it's like amazing. It's mind blowing. Like we have amazing desserts like every day, but I feel like we need to have other things too. And same applies with salad. It's like at this one point I was like sick of having salads. So um, I feel like the food can be a letdown for like uh, some of you guys, but uh, I think you'll learn, you know, it's like, it's just kind of there. You always have like restaurants to go out to and um, the late night food like the food and late night cafes is actually really good so i feel like even if you like don't feel like it and you want to succeed with the meal you can always grab one at the late night cafe um so about the best part of housing i feel like i'm going to focus on security it's like even if it's going to be me like a student at boston university going into a housing that i don't live in i still have to do the whole procedure of signing in you know there's like these visitors slip in every you know uh, every housing unit so it's like you need to scan your id to verify if you're an actual student or not and then you got to fill out this slip and only then enter and like the same applies if you want to bring a friend in you know they need to submit um, a valid uh, photo ID of theirs. So I feel like the security is really good uh, given um, the circumstances around the world. So I feel like that's really good for us. Um, apart from that, I feel like I really like FitRec, uh, which is a fitness center because it's just so big. It has like, uh, it has a pool, um, a rock climbing area, a place for jujitsu. So I feel like um, it's really big and like, you know, and, and basketball courts. I don't know how I forgot that. So, um, so I feel like it's really good and you have your own space, even though it's like, you feel like there's so many people in there at once. It's really spacious and it's like, I go there like, even if I don't feel like working out, like I just go there to have fun, like, and like just relax. when um, I had come back home in December and I was gonna go back and I actually had to leave really early so I was kind of upset about that but on my way back I felt myself you know being really excited because it felt like I was going back to like a second home which I did you know nobody thinks you'll feel that in your first year but like I did and that made me really happy so I think my moment as such was on that plane but yeah like it was I think the first term kind of gradually built that in me, the whole idea of, you know, comfort and like, yeah, the home feeling.
Uh, yeah, it was actually very similar to Chris. In fact, I can tell my feeling right now. It's like, I want to really go back to my university. Yeah, so <laughs> um, I think initially for me, it was really difficult because I was in boarding for like seven years. So like, it was like home for me there. And I didn't want to leave that family to give up, you know, I didn't want to give up that family to get something new, even if that was going to be like, you know, a different experience or whatever. So I think that was really difficult for me, like the transition, you know, it's like, you've always been around these people. And then like, suddenly it's like, nobody's around you. So it's kind of like, oh, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I feel like um, over these two semesters, my freshman year, like towards the end of it, I was like, oh, oh no, like, I can't believe I'm leaving this place already to go back for summer holidays. It's like, I, I mean, it's, it's not like I don't want to because yeah, I want to go back home, but um, I'm going to miss this place so much. But let me be very, very honest. I never imagined that I'd feel that way about university, at least in my f f first year. I thought it was going to be like, yeah, okay, like, I'm just going to run away from home, but it was not like that. Um, it will take time. It's like, you know, for each person it may differ. Like, you know, you just got to settle in and like find your own thing to do. I feel like the minute you do that, it's like, it's like home already. So yeah, <laughs> I do have that thing with my university. Even now, like, I just want to go. <laughs> so basically, I think I should just kind of introduce it a little more first. So yeah, so you it depends on the program that you're in. So for me, um, my fall term is a study term. And then after that, my terms kind of alternate until the end of the year. And I have um, study terms and then work terms. And it just kind of goes until fifth year. Um, so what these work terms are, are like they're internships. They're kind of like internships, but they're paid internships. And it's more like a temp job. So you're not going to be doing like stupid tasks. You're actually going to be like learning stuff. And um, it's, it's honestly, it's like a proper work setting and everything. So the term before you have to take another course, which kind of teaches you how to, you know, make a resume, cover letters. They teach you how to, how to dress for an interview, how to talk, how to answer questions, you know, what kind of questions you should ask them at the end of the interview. And things like that. So that hasn't started for me yet. So I can't talk about how good it's going to be, but it is going to happen this term for me. And from what I've heard from my friends, it's been really helpful to them. And what this kind of does is it gives you experience before you graduate. So when you're going into the, you know, the real world and you're applying for jobs, your full-time jobs, you are already going to have so much experience because you have five or six work terms that you need to complete, you know, to get to graduate basically. And those can happen at different companies. Those can happen at different locations. You can do it in different, you can literally do it in Canada, in the U S you can do it wherever you want to do it, wherever you get a job that you really, really want to do. And you apply to like 50, 60 jobs, and then you get to choose. So it's like a really huge variety. It helps you kind of figure out what you want to do. And a lot of people end up going back and working at the company that they worked at for their last school before they graduated. So it like, I just feel like it gives you a lot of experience and you just feel ready for when you actually have to go into all of this without the security of still having, still being able to study, you know, when you don't have anything else to do, you just have to graduate you have to go into your real world. But I think the, this the co-op thing kind of really helps build you for that so yeah like i that is something that really attracted me to canada and waterloo is known to have one of the best co-op programs for me um i didn't expect the public transport to be so convenient i mean i knew like boston had like good public transport but it was like so the T, like, so there are multiple lines for the train. So you have like the green line, uh, red line and orange line, but uh, blue as well. But um, the green line, which goes to like uh, all the important places as a student for you, it's like right on the road. It's like I walk out of Warren and it's right there. So I feel like that's good because especially given the weather, like it's really, can get really cold, especially, you know, from like December until like beginning of March. So 
that was, I mean, I, I've, I wouldn't call it hidden benefits, but it's like something that I didn't think would be there, you know, so convenient. Um, apart from that, I feel like um, it's just the location itself. It's like, it's so easy to get around the city um, in the sense like, so the Fenway, like the area it has like so many like eateries and like entertainment areas. So I feel like it's just, it's like you need to walk for 10 minutes and then you're there. It's like, so I feel like the location is really good. Even if it's, um, even if it's like something you really need at the moment, like, um, I don't know, like water or like, you know, something like that. You have supermarkets all around you. So I feel like um, that's good. And um, apart from that, uh, so I don't know, but I think I missed to talk about this uh, when uh, Shaila asked me about like, uh, the life at university. Um, so I'm going to touch a little bit, little bit on Greek life in case um, there are any people who love to party and are wondering like, oh, am I going to be legal? Because mass, uh, it's like you can't do anything until you're like 21 <laughs> legally. So um, the location for BU, it's like there are so many frat houses nearby because Olsen is the place for frats, even for like People, if you want to have like off-campus uh, off housing, Olsen is the best. So, and Olsen is like um, one line from the train and like it takes you like 10 minutes to get there maximum. So, um, so like you just, I mean, you need, a, you don't have to be a part of a frat. Like I'm sure all of you guys know this, or like a sorority. It's like as long as you have like friends and you're good. So it's like, if you're wondering, oh no, I'm just a freshman, but I like a party. I have no idea what to do. This is the way for you. And um, BU has a pub. Like I never knew about it till like my second semester. So um, that is right opposite Warren Towers. You just gotta um, walk towards the Charles River and you can find it. It is literally hidden in a building. Like I don't know why it's like that, but um, yeah. But the location is just great. It's perfect. And um, it's really close by the Boston Public Library which is huge and so many students go out there to study because like there's just amazing study space it's quiet i mean uh, it's like um it's really spacious like you can go there to chat with your friends you can go there because they have like the sit out area um and like even to just work on your own so i go there on the weekends um sometimes so i feel like the location is just amazing <laughs>